friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And while I'm cleaning out hoop house number one, those are all the lily crates. Well, hoop house number one is about to get a makeover because Henry is getting a little longer. This is that second hoop house that I had delivered, oh, several months ago. Well, it's time to put it up, so gonna go right there. This new hoop house is the exact same hoop house that I already have. It's a 16 by 50 foot gothic pro with a lift kit from Farmer's Friend. Now I ordered this way back in the springtime after the successful, the huge success of the hoop house this spring. I knew I wanted more of that and I knew I wanted that second house. So I ordered it right away this spring. You know, we got busy and things have been happening at the nursery. We have not had the time to put up this second hoop house and we're running out of time because it's November in upstate New York. We could have snow on the ground any day now. In fact, they're forecasting snow this weekend, which is normal for us. It's normal to have snow on the ground this time of the year, at least bits and pieces. It melts, it comes back. But November snow is a normal thing around here. I reached out to a couple of guys about an hour away from here who put these up professionally. They couldn't get me on the schedule. I just said, you know what? Why don't I just pick a day? Nothing else is gonna happen that day and that's when I'm gonna put the hoop house in. And fortunately, I was having a conversation with my mother and father-in-law and they said, let's do it. Just let us know when to be there. Whew. I could not do these things without that kind of help. And I don't know if you remember, um, Brad said after putting up the hoop house last year um, that he would never put up another hoop house. And he was not kidding. We had such a struggle with the rocks on our property last year that it was a three day process and it was not fun. It was awful, but I know that I could put up this second one. So the plan originally was to put this second one up next to it so that they would be twins sitting right next to each other. But I started to think about it, the most difficult part, and I know some of you guys are gonna say, well, that's the easy part, but for us, the most difficult part was squaring off the space and making sure that everything was going to be um, even and equal and square. Well, since it was already done on the first one, we decided to just work off the back of Henry and just extend the current hoop house from 50 to 100 feet. That way, all we had to do was extend it out. We didn't have to worry about making it square. Obviously, we still made some measurements and made sure that it was still square after being in for a season and everything looked fantastic. Brad did, however, agree to prepare the area when it comes to tilling the space. And it is a bit of a downward slope, but we decided to just put it there anyway. It's not that big of a difference and it's gonna be fine. This type of hoop house is very forgiving when it comes to spacing. The aluminum, it moves, it bends. If you're an inch off here, an inch off there, it stretches, it's going to be fine. Now the Gothic Pro is rated for our region. It's for heavy snow, it's for high winds, and it's been good to me so far. We've only had it up one winter, but we did get some pretty heavy snow. And there was one time when we got 18 inches of snow and I just went out there. I think I only went out there twice this winter to um, just touch the snow off the top of the poly. Otherwise it really does fall off on its own. Unless it's a really heavy wet snow, then you have to make sure that you're out there getting it off the roof. So could I have held off and put this hoop house up in the springtime? Sure, I could have, but the ground around here doesn't really thaw <laughs> until sometimes April. And the problem was I ordered twice as much product for the hoop houses. So if I didn't have this hoop house up this fall, I was going to have wasted thousands of dollars on product. <laughs> this crate right here holds all of the beauty that will fill that hoop house come spring. I'll get to what's in these bags just a minute, but first though, a quick go over of the hoop house. My mother and father-in-law came over. We were able to put the frame together, the rebar in. The installation of the rebar, it was much smoother this time. In fact, um, it took us an entire day, Brad and I, last year because of the amount of rocks that we were hitting. Some of them were the size of small cars. <laughs> so it took an entire day and that's why Brad said never again. Imagine our surprise when we went to put the rebar in this year and it just went in every single time. We hit one rock when putting the rebar in this time. That was a big improvement from last year. In fact, it took us about an hour to get the rebar in. <laughs> that was incredible as opposed to the year before. Brad was watching us off in the distance, waiting for us to come across something. Okay, what are they gonna hit? He was ready with the tractor in case we needed to get a big boulder out. 
It was much easier this time and it was almost giddy like every time a piece of rebar was going into the ground We were like, oh, it was I was holding my breath each time because I'm anticipating the giant rocks that were gonna hit and Every time after one would go in smoothly We would just I would giggle because I couldn't believe we were not hitting anything and we kept whispering to each other Shh, Don't say it don't say it because we didn't want to jinx it But it was a much smoother installation this year We did not plan to put the poly up because it was a very windy day. We are going to wait for a calm day to put up the poly. So it's up, it was much smoother this year. Brad watched from afar until the very end. He needed to come over and help us because we did have some twisted arms on the frame. Um, so he helped us get them um, so that they were not twisted so that the frame was uh, perfectly sturdy and the structure was good to go. So it's up, Henry is now 100 foot long. That means double the fun, double the spring blooms. And that's what the rest of this video is gonna be about what's going in the hoop house for spring 2023. So this is some of what will be going in the hoop house for spring. It's not all of what will be going in the hoop house for spring, but this is the ranunculus and the anemone corms that I purchased for spring 2023. I really had three favorites when it comes to the ranunculus. I really loved the pink, I really loved the white, and I really love that butter yellow color. So I tripled my orders of those for this year. Uh, but that's not all. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, let's go over the list. People were drawn to this so much and it was a CSA member favorite. The ranunculus in general, the CSA members could not wait for. So I'm definitely excited to grow even more this year. And the farmer's market around here starts at the end of June and I have ranunculus through June into July. So hopefully that means that I'll be able to have more ranunculus at the farmer's market. And guys, I have a retail shop now. So I'll be able to sell the ranunculus way earlier than the farmer's market at my retail spot at the nursery in the village. That's why I'm going so big with the flowers in the tunnel this year. Let me just organize because it's chaos in this crate. Half clone. <laughs> I was making a serious mess. <laughs> the crate is empty, bags are all over the floor. I thought it'd be easier to go run and grab my laptop and actually look at my order and do it that way instead of trying to figure out how many bags of each I have because they're only, like for instance, this, um, there are 300 of these, but they're in um, 100 pack bags. So it's easier to just go over my order then try to rifle through the bags. I have a lot of things that were canceled too, so I'm just now realizing I don't think I have enough yellow. Um, so I might have to place an emergency order here, um, but that's okay, I have plenty of time. All right, so my ranunculus order is, this is all from Ball Color Link. Ball is a wholesale supplier. Um, you do need to have a wholesale account with them in order to purchase from Ball, and that's where Dave Dowling works, and he's my sales representative. Dave is also, um, he teaches how to grow cut flowers, especially perennials and bulbs and stuff like that. He is amazing, and Dave's my sales rep, so thanks, Dave. I will be emailing you about getting more yellow ranunculus. <laughs> okay, so what I have here, this is my ranunculus and my anemone order. Amandine Chamalo, Chamalo. It is that beautiful whitish pink. It's almost like a blush color. I have 100 of those corms. This is the one that I think I need more of. Uh, for some reason, I only have 100 of the Amandine Cream. Now it says cream, but it actually grows to be a beautiful butter yellow. Uh, one of my favorites from this past spring. Definitely want more of those. 100, I don't think is gonna cut it. 100 is what I grew last year. I want more of them for sure. I have the space, so let's do that. I have 100 of the Amandine Porcelain. Porcelain, porcelain. It's uh, light pink. I have 100 of this one called Purple Jean. This one is new to me. Last year, I didn't grow any purple ranunculus. I just didn't see it on the list or didn't order it. So we're trying out 100 of the Purple Jean. Okay, we have 100 of the Amandine Rose, which is obviously a pink color. We have 100 of the Salmon. We have 100 of the Scarlet. I didn't grow any of these last year either. Can we seriously just like pause for a second and stare at these because, oh my, they're amazing. The Violet, which is another vibrant purple. I went from growing zero purple last year to loading up on the purple ranunculus this year. I'm excited to see them. I don't know why, I just didn't grow them last year. 
Okay, we're skipping down because these three orders got canceled. 300 of the half clone iceberg, which fills me in with the white. The half clone is that gorgeous shape, the gorgeous petals. Everything about Ranunculus just makes me happy. So 300 of the half clone iceberg, 300 of the half clone marshmallow, which is a pink color. And then I have 100 of the Labelle Champagne, which I absolutely loved last year, but I also loved the salmon, so I got some of each. So collectively, there are a couple hundred of those. And then the Labelle Chocolate. I grew this last year and it was stunning. I absolutely loved how dark this was. People could not believe that it was an actual flower when I posted it on my Facebook page. 300 of the Labelle Pink. This is the beautiful, beautiful pink color that I grew this past year. And then a hundred of the salmon. So the, the champagne and the salmon, so a total of 200 of those. I'm doing some research because I'm like, what's the difference between Labelle and Amandine? Those are the basically two different names other than the clones and the half clones and stuff like that. Amandine and Labelle. The best that I could figure through Googling <laughs> is that they have different bloom times, ones earlier and ones later. Okay, according to Growing for Market magazine, Labelle blooms first and it doesn't tolerate heat well. Amandine starts blooming later but blooms for much longer because it has a greater heat tolerance. So I thought growing some of each with similar colors like an Amandine pink and a Labelle pink, I would have an extended bloom season by growing both varieties. Moving on, we only have a couple more. We have the... Labelle White Picote. So the Picote is the white with the speckles of the pink. It's beautiful. Loved it last year. And then I have the Super Green Cream, which is the white color with the green center. And then I have a Super Green Brick, which is a really cool color with the green center. And then the last on my list for Ranunculus is the Tecalote Rose. And that is obviously a pink color. All right, on to the anemone list. Now, I only grew 100 corms last year. Last year, I got my corms. It was just a mix from Jake. I did not expect them to be so beautiful. I don't know what I was thinking. They were absolutely gorgeous. So 100 corms, I only ended up with about a four foot patch in the hoop house. And that four foot patch was beyond beautiful. Once I put the shade cloth on the hoop house, the stems just got incredibly long and they were usable for months. So I knew I wanted to grow more of those in the hoop house this year. I ended up ordering 100 of the Carmel Bordeaux, 100 of the Carmel Pastel Mix, Full Star Albino. The Full Star was included in the mix that I got from Jake and I had never seen this type of anemone before. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, really surprised by the structure of it and it was something that I was able to tuck into a couple of bouquets. I think it was right around the week of the dance recitals that are locally. Uh, people loved it. They were obsessed. They wanted to know what the flower was and they wanted more of it. So I also ordered the Full Star Strawberry, 100 of those. A couple of those were canceled. I accidentally ordered a thousand of one. I canceled that and ordered a hundred instead of the Galilee White. And that was a substitute actually. I had ordered the Marianne Panda, which is the white with the black center, black blue center really. Um, so they were out of that. So they substituted my Panda with the Galilee White, which also has that dark center with the white petals. So we'll see how that does. I also have ordered a Marianne Blue. I love the blue anemones. It's almost like a, a cornflower blue. It's really beautiful. And it looks like that's it. So for anemones, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that 700 total? Oops, I forgot to mention Marianne White. I also have 100 Marianne White corms here. Yeah, so I have 700 anemone corms and most of these are size five six because they the corms do come in different sizes and the bigger the bulb the bigger the flower and the plant usually sometimes you can get some pretty decent size um, plants from smaller corms but in general the idea is the bigger the bulb or the corm the more productive and the bigger the plant I did find that to be the case last year with my ranunculus because some of my ranunculus were substituted from a size seven eight or five six 
all the way down to a size three and those plants and the flowers themselves were noticeably smaller. So I definitely prefer and sometimes will cancel an order if they substitute it with a smaller size corn. Oh, the sun's coming in in a weird angle. Sorry guys. Um, this is a Tecalote rose. There are a hundred of them. This is labeled as a five centimeter. So basically they're centimeters. So this is a five to seven centimeter form. Because I am zone four, I will not be planting these in my hoop house until early this spring. This last year, I'm pretty sure I was able to plant them in the hoop house. I think it was mid-March. I'm aiming for March 1st this year, a couple weeks earlier, see if we can get it done. And the only reason I didn't do um, that this year is because I didn't have the compost. I had to wait until I had a fresh layer of compost. But this year, we already have the compost and we're already gonna have it spread this week, so it won't be a problem. Everything will be prepped and ready to plant when it comes to early spring. So as long as the ground's not frozen, I'll be planting as soon as I can in the springtime. The earlier the better, honestly, the earlier the better. Um, is that a deer down there? That is a deer. The kitty wants to come in. You will let her in. You may come in, my dear. Come, come. Yes, baby. Say hello. You wanna smell the bag that's open? This one's open. Ooh, she wants to get in the crate. She's in the crate. <laughs> this is what she does every time there's an available crate. Kitty in the crate. Moon, say hello to the camera. You like the crate? Yes, baby. The dog's looking through the window too. All right, the sun is getting real weird in this room, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, that is a summary of what I'll be growing in the Oh, you want to? I'm going to count up the ranunculus. So adding up the ranunculus quick, I have 2,500 ranunculus corms. Last year I did 1,400. So I didn't double it, but I pretty much did. What else will be I, will be I? Why can't my words go right? What else will I be growing in the hoop house this year? Well, so many things, so many things. Definitely stock. The stock did amazingly in there. Definitely more fever view. The fever view was fantastic. I also have some campanula that I already bought in as plugs. I will be putting that in the ground here very soon. As soon as the poly's on that new hoop, the campanula is going in the ground and that I'm gonna try to overwinter in the hoop. That is zone three for overwintering and inside the hoop house, should even better, should be even better than that. And then what else? There, this is better. The sun is being really weird. I think this is a little bit better. This is where I have my morning coffee every day. I'm kicking the camera. Okay, so Moon, please stay out of my ranunculus, baby. She wants to eat it. Okay, so stock, feverfew, campanula. I'll do more snapdragons in there. The snapdragons said fantastically. But what I really want to grow more of in there as well are poppies. The poppies, I only did a four foot patch. Those were fantastic and uh, hugely requested by people. Even though they don't have the best vase life, they do have very fond memories for some people and I have very specific requests of poppies and bouquets. So those are a few things that I'll be growing in the hoop house and I'm sure I'll be growing some other fillers as well. I have Crest that did really well in there. The Orlea did really well in there. Uh, the Lysianthus I didn't love in the hoop house. Um, it didn't really do great. It ended up getting a little bit of fungus and disease, so maybe not enough airflow in my hoop house in the early days. So what about you guys? What is something that you guys successfully grow in the hoop house that you think I should try? Let me know in the comments below, guys, and thank you so much for sticking around. It's gonna be a beautiful spring around here, that's for sure. Bye, guys. You're the floofy floof. You're the biggest floofy floof. I have you. Oh. It's a cat in the crate and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. All right, Moon, I'm putting you down. Mm. Oh, her name is Moon. <laughs> Little boy blue and her name is Moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when. We'll get together then. Yo, you're not allowed in here either. You're such a good girl, you know. Oh, get out! Get out, get out. Okay, so just so everyone knows for storage, I just am putting them back in the crate and these will sit in the garage until I start them <laughs> probably in January. Okay, they'll go in the garage.